My life was dull and unfulfilled. Something was just off. So I did some research and discovered that I had accidentally subscribed to Epic Light Media on YouTube. Here is how you can unsubscribe to Epic Light Media as well. Simply open the YouTube app and type in Epic Light Media. Go to their channel and tap unsubscribe. There. Doesn't that feel better? Lynn doesn't know this, but before she came here, we actually worked on this lighting setup for like three hours. Lynn, what do you think about all of this stuff? Another week and so many hours. Never impressed with the lighting, never grateful. First, I wanna talk about this. This is a 20 by 20 non-bleached muslin. This is very soft and it's very warm. So it's taking our daylight balanced lights that are behind it, a 600D and a 1200D, and it's warming it up a lot. The reason why it's here is because I wanted a very, very soft wrap around Lynn's face, thinking that maybe in the, in the viewer's eyes, this room has more windows going across it. Through this window, there's a couple other things going on. You have an Aperture Nova at 3200 Kelvin, just to warm up these shears a little bit. Next, we have a strong slash of light coming in onto the couch, hitting Lynn's hands, her legs and the side of the couch. That is being achieved with a 600X with a Fresnel lens with barn doors attached to get this harsh light coming through the window. We didn't want it to be hitting Lynn's face though, so we're using the barn doors to really control it. Also through the window, we have an Aperture 300D Mark II with a gel on it, and it's actually making this light here on the, on the wall. We also put a big black moving blanket outside and clamped it onto the roof just so we could control some of the natural light that was spilling onto this back wall here, and it was bouncing off the green grass and causing some green issues. This is not a window, this is actually a sliding glass door, but I didn't like the idea of a sliding glass door here with the setup, so we kind of turned it into a window. We used gaff tape to make it seem like a window, and from the angle of the camera, it does look like a window. This painting on the wall is actually crooked, but in camera, it looked straight. I don't know why. We were just having a hard time with the shot. Finally, we made it crooked and everything started looking a lot better. It was falling into darkness though, so we used this Amaran two foot light bar to, to illuminate it, kind of thinking like, okay, people have paintings in their house with a little painting light above it. So that's kind of simulating that. And I think it looks pretty natural because it's coming from a high source, like the house has house lighting somewhere. Here we have the Amaran Light Mat F22C, which uh, is a two foot by two foot light that can do pretty much any color. We have it at 3200 Kelvin. And my idea here was, okay, we got this strong slash of light. It's probably hitting furniture, the rug, the floor. And so this is simulating the light bouncing off of objects in the room from a low angle onto Lynn's face. It also gave us kind of a little bit of a nice eye light as well. For our camera today, we're using the Canon C70 with a 35 millimeter prime lens, and it's on this slider. And the slider's at an angle because that way this we can go up to her face a little bit more at the end. This is definitely the, a poor man's process here. We don't have a big dolly or anything fancy, but when it goes forward, it goes up a little bit. Also, the reason why we went widescreen was that way we can have a longer move without seeing the rails at the bottom. And it also looks cool. <laughs> and it looks really cool. For the close-up phone shot, I grabbed a 100 millimeter 2.8 full frame lens from Canon. The reason why we're using full frame lenses is because this has a Metabone speed booster on it. So the C70 becomes basically full frame. The couch was too bulky, it was in the way, so we couldn't get the angle right. So we moved the couch out. Now she's sitting on a bench. So we were able to get the camera right where we wanted it. She was getting too dark on this other side though, and her hair was falling into darkness too much. So we used this bounce. This little Amaran light, we actually moved it even closer to have this beautiful soft light coming from beneath her, her hand there. The room did have haze before, but we killed the haze and we didn't really need it for this tight shot because it looked great. All right, Lynn, you're gonna walk in. I'm gonna see your hands. You're gonna put them on the counter there and put them on the counter. Wonderful, put your other hand up now, perfect. I love making ads about not subscribing to Epic Light Media. It's like my favorite thing. You're looking sad and dejected. Look up towards the window. 
I really like the cinematography of Lawrence Schur. He did The Hangover, The Joker. He loves to use like green fluorescent lights. So we threw in a green fluorescent light here. And that's just the Amaran two foot light bar. In the background underneath the cabinet, we put some Aperture MCs, just like three of them. Outside of the window, we have an Aperture Nova shining through some simple diffusion rolled up on a C stand. For Lynn's main key light, we use the Amaran F22C. Now that is positioned by where the windows are and so we can have mostly shadow towards us. In the background though, we did want a little bit of a slash of light. So we used this 300X with this Fresnel barn doors and this contraption right here just to cut the light so we can have a little slash of light in there. And someone's uh, borrowing our spotlight. Someone rented our spotlight and didn't bring it back to us on time. So we have to use this. For these foreground elements, we wanted them to seem like they were on the island, but the island wasn't in the right spot. So we kind of made our own island here so we could have some foreground elements. And that's always nice when you're using a slider because then it can show what's going on. For the second angle, we threw on a 100 millimeter lens from Canon onto the C70 and that got us some tighter angles. I would have used a wider lens closer up, but I was too lazy to move the camera. Roger Deakins would be upset with me for not moving the camera, just throwing on a longer lens. If he knew who you were. If he knew who I was, but he doesn't, so. So to make this area more interesting and not just so much stage, they decided to put some papers here, look like a kid was getting ready to do a project, and then show off some of the art that our crew has done and make it more interesting and make it look like a kid lives here. If you enjoyed this video and you want to subscribe to Epic Light Media, don't. It will lead to a depression in your soul that, <laughs> frankly, is not good. So unsubscribe from our channel. And if you want to subscribe to a channel, subscribe to Lewis Potts. He's one of the most talented filmmakers of our time and he lives in Australia.